Welcome to Al Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. The E stands for evil. Hi, I'm Matt. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta. And for Slender Month 2017, most slender. Tonight we have A Slender Night by Stephen Shorter, which is also read by The Creeping Dark, which we'll get into that when we start. So, yeah, it's Slender Month. When we like, start, right now. <laughs> yes. So, it's Slender Month 2017. Um, this will be the last episode of Slender Month. Um, this will also probably be the last one of a full month of Slender Man, because next year we're probably just going to do one or two, because we're, I'm running out of real content for it, aside from Slender Vlogs, and those take a lot more time to go over and review. So, um, yeah, this one was done... Sl- a Slender Night is a short story by Stephen Shorter, which we've had on the show before. And, unfortunately, he got rid of the written version of it online, so the only version you can actually check out is by a YouTube channel called The Creepy Dark. Um, and it, the story itself is basically inspired by um, a... Okay, for Matt, it's a German woodblock guy, right? Hans Holbein the Younger, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's also a famous, uh, port- he's also a fam- famous portrait artist. Uh, has a lot of work, um, mainly because when he he eventually moved to England and got commissioned by Henry VIII. <laughs> oh. Which is why, uh, if you look at his Wikipedia page, um, most of the pictures on there are portrait work and mostly of the royal family. Yeah, weird. <laughs> it's almost like he was getting commissioned. <laughs> Uh, so I have a rundown for this one. Um, you can check it out at the Creepy Darks YouTube channel uh, as part of his Slender Tales, which don't he actually does. have a connection between any of the stories. They're just aside from being Slenderman stories. Yeah. Um, basically, and also there's uh, there is an old there. I guess it's also said in his video, but he did have hay fever when he was recording that. <laughs> yeah, which could explain some of his. Uh, pronunciations and issues of I don't know. I don't think I don't think having a stuffed nose would lead to you like mispronouncing cologne. Yeah. I've never had a stuffed nose so bad that I kept saying cologne. Yeah. What well, is cologne is cologne actually the the German like pronunciation if you, for it? Yeah, if you look at okay. if you look at the comments in the video, there's a lot of people <laughs> that speak German that are like, "You said this word wrong. You said this word wrong." Yeah, actually, we we re-listened to it earlier because uh, Mikey, the East End's Revival, hadn't actually uh, dived into it um, uh, up until like a couple of hours from now or before or mm-hmm. before now. And um, yeah, I even I think I even caught like another word that he is like, "That's pretty sure that's not supposed to be how that's pronounced." <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere in there he says Rossman. Yeah. Um, saying like a weird like um, Yiddish G, yeah. When it's just supposed to be Grossman, yeah. Which is also another common name for the Slender Man in a lot of the Slender lore, or in the mythoses in general. What what name like what what are all the names? Because there's the Slender Man, there's the Operator. Oh boy, there's um, there's the there's Slender Der, Man, there's Der Ritter because of this woodblock carving. Yep, yeah. um, Der Ritter. There's um, the Tall Man, obviously the Tree Man, uh, De Groberman. Um, De Grossman, um, the Pale Man. Um, actually, I don't also, I'm pretty sure. De, I'm pretty sure. De, I'm pretty sure De Grossman is just the Tall Man, but in German. Yeah, that's basically it. Because they, uh, at some point down the road, like in all the uh, photo manipulations and whatnot, they basically. Hang on a second. It seems like that woodblock carving has just sort of led the canon to just say the Slender Man. Nobody knows where the Slender Man came from, but we know first that oh. the Slender Man was from Germany. Yeah, which is hilarious because I, I don't like. It's just because of the old photos, right? Yeah, <laughs> that it's, were it's photo yeah. Manipulated. Also, well, it's, I am it's, actually it's, looking it's, up the uh, Slender Man wiki, and I'm already seeing like a crap ton more of his names: <laughs> the White King, Master Black King. Um, <laughs> Slendy. So he controls both sides of the chessboard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, actually, even in, well, I, th- I, I did a, I put him in one of my Call of Cthulhu games once, and I, I called him the Checkered King. 
Nice. Um, also, can I say that Master Black King sounds like an exploitation <laughs> film? <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Oh, okay, maybe, sorry, it's not Master Black King, he's also just known as Master. <laughs> and, okay. And it's Black King, not, okay. Um, sure. There's uh, Fear Dub, which I think might be an Irish or Celt, like, old Irish name for him? Because I think, uh, oh, I don't know, no, Grass is Fear, right, okay. Um, there's, yeah, Schlock, uh, oh god, uh, I'm just going to send you this link for a second. <laughs> Okay. Just so, because I'm not really good with German, <laughs> and I'm trying. It's like schlank. I'm not great, but I'll take. Um, let's see. Or schlankwald. Yeah, uh, I, I sh- I'd be schlankwald. if yeah. it's German. And then there's Slendy. I mean, and there's also like alter egos of him, like Splendor Man, <laughs> which is like a comedy version of him. <laughs> oh yeah, Splendor Man. That was made by Neil C. Sarega. Yeah. After uh, After Marble Hornets wrapped. Yep. Um, Yay! It's Splendor Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, My favorite thing at the end is him doing the fucking Charleston. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just uh, that's really complicated to do because that was a guy wearing stilts. Yeah, I know. <laughs> at some point, I might actually do that for an April Fool's episode. <laughs> we just, just we just review that. Uh, but yeah, so that his names are are, are vast and varied. But yet, also very describing. Yeah, except for Slendy, that's just the uh, the nickname. nickname. Or, or as apparently a lot of people started calling it when the, that one video game came out, Slender. They just call him that. Sure, why not? Uh, I'm surprised. Give me twenty dollars isn't in here. Yeah, <laughs> the give me twenty dollars, man. <laughs> Have you found any stories? Have you found any stories that actually involve the giving of twenty dollars to Slender Man? I think I found a really shitty one that I didn't want to do because it was just so like obviously a, a tie into the video game, which was give me twenty dollars. Oh right, I forgot. There's a give. They forgot. There's give me twenty dollars mode yeah. in in Slender the Arrival. Yeah, I think on the creepypasta.wiki, if you go into like the entities or Slender Man part of it, there mm-hmm. is like literally one that's called like the Slender video game or the give me twenty dollars mode. <laughs> As a story, nice. but I think it, I'm not sure if it's an actual story or just like a dumb description that somebody did of that mode. It, I mean, it could be both. Yeah. Remember, remember when you guys did that uh, Nana five six eight two three one whatever story that was just describing the videos from that channel? Yeah. Yeah. We don't like to talk about that because even I got really angry at that. <laughs> uh. It's just so bad. <laughs> Why do you think Dr. Leviathan's not on the show anymore? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, um, yeah, that's so... Uh, where were, where, where do we go? Where do we? St- where were we going after we started talking about their names? <laughs> um, I mean, that's just like the start of the story. Yeah, basically, yeah. We were not even, like, 30 seconds into this story yet. Yeah. So, basically, the rundown for this one is uh, the narrator is talking about uh, a German town called Cologne. Right. It was We were making fun of the, the pronunciation of Cologne. <laughs> um, yeah. These, uh, talking about this German, t- uh, German town called uh, Cologne, uh, specifically a museum of art uh, called the Kronenhaus Gallery um, that has an exhibit uh, about the, the history and culture of Cologne. Uh, it's here we get a, that the narrator is focusing on this place due to its connection to the Slender Man, or as the Germans call him, de Grossmann, speaking to the reader as though they are they have an interest in the Slender Man or have been stalked by him, have some kind of connection to him. Yeah, kind of. Well, it starts like the first I don't know minute and a half of this story is like a tour guide. Yeah. Like, oh, be sure to be sure to check out the local market. And, <laughs> While uh, you're in Cologne, the... <laughs> when you're not running, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then I mean, it's, and after that, it's like, all right, I'm gonna whatever. You're here. You're here about the Slender Man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> here's what you can look up. <laughs> yeah, ex- basically. Um, and yeah, he shows this place uh, that, or he tells, the, well, he tells of this place that has uh, paintings and etchings that show uh, this being in the Middle Ages revealing a tall, mysterious knight with a helmet-like mask that is faceless because it was worn down from the ivory. Yeah, which I know said it's happen it's. With ivory statues i think they do wear down eventually so it's said in the painting of the original figure that uh he has a he has a mask it's honestly this is reminding me kind of uh friday the 13th because it says that he wears an ivory mask that looks like a that looks like a human face at peace 
Oh, which yeah. honestly just reminds me of Michael Myers. <laughs> Wait, did you say Friday the 13th with Michael Myers? Wasn't it? Michael Myers' uh, Halloween. <laughs> Jason oh, yeah. Voorhees is Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm, I, get, yeah, I get my generic white mask wearing antagonist mixed up sometimes. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, then he goes into uh, about a set of tax records that you can find in the basement that are slightly damaged, but if you go to the very first part of it of 1098 AD, there is a strange uh, recording of a tall caged prisoner um, who was very, uh, into very from, tall cage containing one prisoner. Yeah. Yeah. Who was uh, brought in from the Crusades. Um, and that's basically all the description we get because there's no other records further. So it's just kind of like a mysterious little like tidbit of inf- of like weirdness. And one thing you left out in the first part is that there's a is that the painting of the tall man with the ivory mask is um, it's a painting of the of crusaders from Cologne, right. and this one person this one guy is wearing the their their armor but is much much taller than them and carrying a very long lance that could not possibly be used on horseback. Right. Yeah. Um. And then after the uh, the tax record mystery. We get a, a description of a tapestry that's hidden in the attic, or in the dark, so as not to be uh, ruined by light, and photography is prohibited and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it's this uh, tapestry that tells a story of um, defenders against... Um, it's the Turkish defenders yeah, in some castle. Yeah. I, I thought it was actually somewhere in Cologne. Like, it was, like, during the like the siege on that. And so that, maybe that's... I got kind of confused as to where... This was taking place. No, because they they refer to the because they refer to the Crusaders on one side and the and the Turkish and the defenders against the Slenderman in one of the later things. Right. Okay. So it is in the basically in the middle or like where the Crusades were taking place, not near Cologne. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then yeah, this the Slenderman knight uh, appearing before the defenders, and then the last bit of it is basically all the figures are gone, including the Slenderman and the bodies. And the curator of the museum thinks that it, the story, the uh, the artist, never got around to finishing this, the the uh, tapestry, or he died before he could finish it, or something. And the writer basically leaves off with, "I think you and I know the actual truth," um, and then basically ends the story there. <laughs> yeah, and there's a couple of um, there's some interesting things from this that. That, that obviously it leaves the timeline very in question because it's just like these are these three artifacts we have, yeah. And so the, the 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 way that I worked it out in my head, which maybe is not the way, but um, also raises a bunch of every angle of the story raises a few questions. Yeah. Um, but the way that I interpreted it, it um, is that the the portrait happens first, then the tapestry, and then the shipping manifest. Yeah. Except I don't know because ex- except I don't know why the Slender Man would have been captured. Although yeah, to like, be fair, I'm not sure why the Slender Man is fighting in a holy war. I mean, I think it might like it, there's some there's some really cool like ideas for this story. Like again, but it does seem like uh, yeah, like there's some kind of contrasting or like misleading views. Like I could have I could see the the Slender Man make maybe he's like maybe his origins are in Cologne and he was a man once and then became something more or something or something creepy uh, or supernatural during the Holy War and stuff or he was something I mean, that was brought yeah. back from the Crusades in the cage but in the story it's presented both things basically or both angles I guess it also could be one of these things like consider like consider 300 yeah. where they show all of they show all these things as like monsters but it's because it's like a tall tale and so yeah you could also have some of this animist concept where this guy was a fearsome warrior that was un, that was uncontrollable and so mm-hmm. all you have is this shipping manifest of a very very tall man coming back and in legends and in portraiture and in tapestry he's depicted as this like 12 foot tall monster yeah so basically he's like the the monster now that that's stalking people now is really just a glorified version of the the man <laughs> that was taken prisoner yeah I mean the other thing here is that I mean the other thing here is that like I guess they wanted to say it's the slender man, but it could yeah there's a bunch of things that could be there. Because obviously, if we're going to go with it's still the same guy that he's lived for like a thousand years. 
Also, I guess 1098 isn't exactly the Crusades. The Crusades is like the Dark Ages around the yeah. 1400s. So it would be that he was brought... Although then they also say it was a it was a shipping manifest from the Crusades. So I don't know. My knowledge of world history is very bad. Yeah. I probably should have checked that a little bit more on 1098. Um, yeah, cause I don't know. The Dark Ages lasted a very, very long time. Yeah. There's a reason they were. Uh, okay, the Crusades were actually 1095 until um, a long, long time later. <laughs> well, okay, the first, so it was, it was the first Crusade was 1096 to 1099, and then there were also more. There was another Crusade in the 12th century, the 13th century, the 14th, 15th, 16th <laughs> centuries. I mean, and then yeah. there's you know, there's it's still happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna. I was just gonna yeah, say it's like. I mean, people have been going on crusades for. for well, it's it's basically a cycle of history. <laughs> but yeah, so crusades. it's from the. It's yeah. I don't remember when he says because uh, I I listened to the story a few times, but I have a hard time remembering spoken word as opposed to written word. <laughs> yeah, and I really, so I don't. I, I really. But they do. Okay, so it, it's it's the first it's the first crusade because they're talking about the Byzantine Empire who needed reinforcements for fighting the for fighting the Turks. Yeah. So this is all the first crusade. Okay, so and so 1098 would have been near the end of the would have been near the end of the first crusade, so that kind of fits up with the timeline I had in my head. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually something uh, we we should bring up. Also, is like I kind of wish there was a written version of this mm-hmm. because like the story does like the story's not bad in terms of like a, like a sto- like a if you could I, I could easily see this being used as like an artifact or for a slender vlog um, mm-hmm. or like a YouTube like one of those like YouTube video uh, series that have like people look doing research on the slender man or what what's hunting them and stuff this, mm-hmm. and I like the idea of the slender man having like a, a like using the historical rooting of the slender man that is in the slender man mythos stuff or like people have portrayed it like with the German uh, like he's been around since World War two and then this one kind of presents that he's even older than that. Um, mm-hmm. And that he's like something out of the Black Woods. So again, we have more ger- like he's steeped in some kind of German historical lore, but- which is fitting because German because uh, everything related to German fantasy is terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. That's where you get the Scissor Man. That will cut off your finger or your thumbs if you uh, if you suck on them. I think is the one. Yeah, he cuts. Yeah, yeah. bad children suck on their thumbs, so the Scissor Man comes and chops their thumbs off. Yep. Terrifying. I mean, like, that's basically the Grim Tales. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think also Grimm's Fairy Tales came from Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, anything out of the Black Woods in Germany is just utterly is basically horror <laughs> because they were all caught caution- like really like they were basically you got to traumatize your kids to make them you know behave. Hmm. Um, yeah. They all had a they all had a moral, and that moral was be good. Yeah. <laughs> or else, <laughs> I guess that to be fair, that's also. Most of the uh, to to take a slight tangent here. That's also the story. Like most um, yokai stories from Japan are yeah. like the same thing. Where like, oh, you don't if you don't go to bed if you don't go to bed early, then this this demon comes the this the taper comes and steals your dreams or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. The the one that drowsy is made at, made from <laughs> or is yeah. inspired by. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This. Uh, so also, yeah. This. Yeah, so the pasta is itself. Um, uh, I actually did got- Stephen actually say why he took it down? I know he takes down. I know he took down a lot of his old stuff just because he didn't like it. Yeah, I had an interview with him, and uh, or basically just asked him questions on Twitter <laughs> as my interview process. Um, because after reading this, I kind of wanted to know some things about it. And from the sounds of it, yeah, he kind of got bummed out by um, the Slender Man, the way Slender Man was going in the media. And kind of decided to stop writing stories about Slenderman because of that. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, the well was just poisoned. Yeah. As it is as it is want to be when you just open up the fiction and don't have any kind of, like, governance. Yep. But yeah, when you just have, like, basically um, uh, a shared community that have... But, see, at the same time, like, I don't see it as necessarily as poison. I mean, yeah, he got really big in like mass media because of like the video game and stuff like that and his popularity on social media. But there's a lot of like different angles people took with him. I like that like kind of creativity that There's got. a lot of people there's a lot of angles people took with him, but at the same time, if you talk to somebody who is a who's like a, a horror enthusiast or a creepy pasta enthusiast and you mention Slenderman, you're either going to get somebody who's 
it's there. There's a there's a high likelihood of people just rolling their eyes and being like, Ugh. yeah, like oh, because like, cause it's because it also opened up people like, like people even. Like, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just was gonna say yeah, because it kind of opened people who weren't really into the creepypasta community, but really only came in because of Slenderman. And yeah, it's new- another. Um, it's another. What is it? Eternal September or whatever. Um. um it's a uh, it's a term from when the World Wide Web started. That, oh, okay. uh, basically, back when the World Wide Web was only on colleges, uh, September was always the worst month because the new people showing up to the internet were um, well, the new people showing up to the internet were the people who just signed up, like or you know, when college enrollment started, yeah. and people came to college and got on the internet and started shit posting on the on the message boards and stuff like that. Right. The, or the the bulletin board systems and stuff, and they get corrected. And so September was always regarded as the worst month. And then once the World Wide Web happened and everybody got to be on there, then that's that's the point. That's the fall from grace, which is re- which is referred to as Eternal September. Because huh. <laughs> there's always new people. <laughs> yeah. There's always new people, and a lot of them are shitheads. <laughs> yeah, there's always shit posters. There's always trolls. Yeah. And so there's probably yeah, or also I think. You have, I mean, you're gonna have this in like every community. Like, you have the the home the homestucks to the cosplay community and that kind of stuff. Yeah, always um, have it's that just, guy or gal. <laughs> yeah, there's always there's always some kind of there's always some kind of media that, for better or worse, introduces a lot of people to a thing. Mm-hmm. And then there's also once that's open, you also get a once once you have a lot of people in something, there is a greater chance that somebody is gonna be shitty. Yeah, and yeah, so there's. I mean, so that's one of the things, and it's also like Slenderman. Slender, Slenderman is to creepy pasta what zombies are to literally anything else. <laughs> yeah, all, all, yeah, basically horror. All or, media. Yeah, just media in general. Because yeah, as soon as anybody says, "Oh, zombies," and you kind of just start to roll your eyes and start to like, "Oh, great, you've added to the pile." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's yeah, and that's the thing. Like, like when you go like it, when you go to the crappy pasta wiki, like <laughs> how how much Slenderman shit is there in there? Like, yeah. I think that's. I think that's kind of the thing. Is like there's been a lot of good stuff, but there's also a lot of crap. Just because it's a lot easier to make crap than it is to make something good. Yeah, I mean, uh, so I don't blame yeah. him for like kind of losing enthusiasm in the Slenderman. Mm-hmm. Um, it does surprise me that uh, I guess like because the thing is the Slenderman, the Slenderman, it, you can make another character that's like the Slenderman. Like yeah. the Slenderman was just a character that was made up. It was nothing. And then got a whole bunch of fiction attributed to it. Like I had a game I made based on the Slender Man where I just replaced him with this like weird deer looking thing and it played the same. I don't because the Slender the Slender Man is the Slender Man is irrelevant to this. It's like it's like how uh, Alien Isolation doesn't need Alien. It doesn't yeah. need the setting. The thing that made Alien Isolation scary was the pacing and the way that the game was constructed. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, it's the uh, whole. You, you, I guess it's it's the, re- re- replaced with like any kind of creepy tall monster, or even not even tall monster, just something like something that will def- that will creep people out. Yeah, and so yeah, mm. and I I kind of like I kind of like this story um, in the in the idea that I I like any story where like some kind of where some kind of monster decides to just try and live with people and and do people things, and maybe this is like a little like. Uh, jingoistic, but I, I also really like when you have supernatural creatures involved in war, just because you get that weird like alternate history perspective. Yeah, uh, like yeah, the whole alternate, the whole like oh, like there's something uh, deeper going on than just like you know people being really shitty to each other and starting a war. <laughs> like uh, yeah. for me, like it's kind of like why I like when there's something supernatural that's slightly tied, that's like subtly in so- like a true crime uh, series, because. Mm-hmm. Like I don't mind a horror from true crime um, or like from a serial killer and some of that, but I kind of want there to be a dis like some kind of disconnect or some kind of like maybe supernatural analogy for it, so that I don't lose faith in humanity. <laughs> sure, yeah, you want your True Detective season one instead Ex- of your True Detective exactly. season two. Because <laughs> you want way more McConaughey and way less Vince Vaughn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because yeah, like it's like with with season I mean, spoilers for season one of True Detective, but like 
it could have all been in his head, or it could have actually been, you know, the king in yellow stuff, or it could have been some kind of mythos magic going on. I mean, it's not even like, I don't even think that's really spoilers. Like, yeah, they guess, say king in yellow in, like, the first two episodes, yeah, and but I mean, they, like, keep, they keep throwing Carcosa over and over again. It's like a, it's a very minor element in there, but it comes, it comes into fruition near the end. Yeah. But I mean, like, the, the big, like, there's things in that series that, like, oh, it could all just be in his head because he's, like, a, he did take, he does take drugs and stuff like that and has been having acid trips. Or yeah. it could just be, you know, actual, like, subtle mythos magic going on. Yeah, I guess it's not Yeah, no one can say. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, about um, A Slender Knight, yeah, the, um, I did actually, like, ask Stephen uh, about, um, like, the fact that it did, this did feel like a bigger story. Um... And I got, well, if you want, I can uh, read off his his reply to that. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, it felt like a, uh, an artifact of a bigger story. Actually, to me, it, it it was like something from one of the vlogs. And then his reply was, "I plan to turn it into a series. The second story I wrote was about the Slender Man's place in Native American mythology, and his entry into modern American myth." When he was responsible for the disappearance of General Custer at the Battle of Little Bighorn, but <laughs> just after I uploaded that entry, Mr. Creepypasta did a Jeff the Killer vs. Slenderman episode. I kind of bummed it. Kind of bummed me out that it was going in that in the direction of the mythos was going. So I purged the second part from the internet. The first got taken down from the wiki at some point, but I was kind of down, done with that bigger story anyway. So yeah, basically. He had plans to make it a little bit more, Steve, a little bit more, like, connect it more with history and stuff, but then, or, like, kind of get that alternate history angle, and then got bummed out. Yeah, I think, <laughs> and I mean, now, that I know, now that I know that Slenderman versus Jeff the Killer exists, I, I'm definitely going towards that, yeah, the well was poisoned. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I, like, <laughs> for me, it's, you it's You could have just because... said that story, and I would have known. <laughs> Like, for me, it, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword, because I like parody uh, so much, and I like, like, making fun of horror, like, like... Was it, was this actually, was this actually, because Mr. Creepypasta put this up, and Mr. Creepypasta seems like he goes for legit stories, although he did, I think he did all of Happy Happy at some point, yeah. for God knows what reason. I think he's done also Jeff the Killer versus Jane the Killer, which that's a thing too that we've done on the show too. Yeah, is that like is that like a is that a troll? Is a is that a parody? I think it. I want to hope it's a tro- it's a troll pasta. It certainly feels like a crappy pasta. <laughs> but like that's another thing about the community. Like there's creepy pastas, there's crappy pastas, and then there's troll pastas, which are purposely made to be shitty and to be like trope riddled and like just for the troll or for the lols. Yeah, and like I'm, I, I like the seriousness of like of creepypastas sometimes, like the dark, like the horror aspect, of course, because mm-hmm. it sometimes they can really grip you with like some cool like thrills. But then I also kind of like making fun of it, <laughs> as seen on the show. Most of, like, sure, sure, time. sure. So yeah, yeah no. like the whole poisoning of the well with that, like I just see it as another like side of the community or the. So side I guess that's the thing. It's like is I mean okay. So the the thing I'll say there is like. <laughs> Jeff the Killer versus Slender Man. I, I'd have to. I have to give. I. I mean, I don't have to, but I feel like I'd need to give that a, a listen before I'm like, okay, this is garbage. Yeah, and I mean, the I'm, title I'm, leads me to believe it's garbage, but it could be intentional garbage. Well, how about we'll or try- it could be, or it could just be Freddy versus Jason, where it's like really stupid, but that's the point. Or Jeff the Killer versus Jane the Killer, which was basically the creepypasta equivalent of Fre- Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> sure. Or that, I guess yeah, uh, Child's Play, Child's Play Four. Yeah. Where they bring in the girl doll. Right. Yeah, the bride of Chucky. And then yeah, that's the seed what it's of called, Chucky, right? and now there's the cult of Chucky. Christ! <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's the thing. Like, that's a, that's, that's yeah, that's the thing. That's, 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 yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're 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 trying to be that '80s B horror, which yeah. they're doing. They're doing exceptionally. Like they they want to be fucking, uh, and that's I guess why Nightmare, like the remake of Nightmare, was bad because it was too dark or too. Uh, yeah, I, Nightmare I, Nightmare was always really Nightmare was. Always, <laughs> You know that's my favorite. Uh, my favorite summary of Nightmare is a is a wisecracking boilermaker teaches teens to believe in their dreams. Oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> it's also one hundred percent accurate. Yeah. <laughs> god damn it, Wes Craven. Uh, yeah. So, 
And I mean, like the whole like I guess that maybe that's why people like love making like tribute movies or movies that are styled like the '80s movies. And like when the when they try to do a serious version of like a, or like a serious remake of something from the '80s, it kind of falls flat a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, there's also the thing where like the, the, these concepts were new and fresh. Like yeah. if you if you watch the original, the, what I actually mean to be the original Friday the Thirteenth, <laughs> like that is a that's a really boring and trope filled movie. But it's a really boring and trope filled movie because it's the one that created all the tropes and was super edgy at the time. Yeah. And also, Jason is all, Jason is barely in it, which Jason's is interesting. Not in it except for one scene, one at the, scene very end. the one scene at the end, and he's not even the killer in the movie. <laughs> yeah, spoilers which I guess spo- for a thirty-year-old spo- movie. <laughs> yeah, it's Jason's Jason's mom. We've just ruined it for like a small percentage. It's of fine. Podcasts, this movie sure. that movie does not hold up very well. Yeah. Yeah. You ruined it for me. Oh, have you not seen that movie? <laughs> no. Seriously, it's yeah. it's really it's really not a good movie. Even even by even by eighties like slasher movie standards, I would not call it a good movie. No, but I mean it's still fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's it's okay. <laughs> it's it's not a very good movie, but it's still good. To it's watch. Jason's Jason's mom has this has this habit of like just kind of teleporting where she needs to be. Yeah, and and people which just is, like. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Shank. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I mean, there's a scene where like there's a scene where apropos of nothing, someone just gets like stabbed uh someone's laying in bed and just gets stabbed through the throat through yeah. their mattress. Yeah. And it's like there's no there's no setup or anything. They just die. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, there was a setup because the uh, his girlfriend left. And his girlfriend the, leaves the, and then the body he, was there's a body on the uh the second bunk and he was getting blood splatter. Or, like, blood was dripping through the mattress onto him, and that's what kind of, like, tipped him off that something was ro- wrong. But by that point, it was too late. And ah, then, okay, I must yeah. have missed that. <laughs> I, I, I forgot about it, I guess. It's been two years since I've seen that movie. Fair enough. <laughs> um, <sighs> yeah, so... Uh, what else do we want to say about Slender Knight? <laughs> since we're um, tensioning off. But I guess that's because it is kind of feel like an incomplete story, because, like, it kind of just... It, it pops by. It's a, it's literally a six minute uh, reading on on the channel. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a it's just a breakdown. Um, you're you're interested in some stuff about the Slender Man. Here's three things about the Slender Man. This is all we know. Yeah, and uh, and it kind of just leaves it leaves it up to your own interpretation of events and what you think happened. Which is, um, I think, as far as creepy pastas go, that's usually a good way to resolve it. Yeah, because the best resolution in horror is no resolution. Yeah, good horror is like uh, good horror is like bad sex. <laughs> you just ratchet up the tension and just leave them there. <laughs> no climax at all. <laughs> uh, wow. Um, I guess uh, one thing that we can uh, talk about uh, is like the uh, the Deritter inspiration. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, we the could talk the the, uh, the art pieces that were in the story because um, I did talk uh, when I was talking to Steve and he did say uh, that basically the the woodblock piece uh, of Deritter was kind of the inspiration that laid the groundwork for the other uh, pieces in the story that he mentions. Yeah, I was trying to see if the if the other paintings actually like if some if there were photoshops of those paintings. Like I'm guessing those are original ideas that never actually had physical representations. Yeah, basically um, the way I got it from him it was that they were they were uh, like he, he he started with the woodblock and then he kind of made up the other ones. Yeah, that's fair. So and because he wanted to have like, because to him like it would be interesting like that if this, for the Slender Man like it was just like an ivory mask that was worn down, um, and then he just went through like the different uh, like ways that somebody can interpret that in like art, right? So like tapestry and the woodblock art. Sure. I guess I don't know. I guess the thing that confuses me is why he felt the need to make it into a mask, and I guess also what's behind that mask. Like I don't know why why it needs. Why it needs to be explained as a mask? Um, Unless we're like, are we getting into the? Are we? Are we then not? Because the other part of this is again, we can go back to legend and something like that. And instead of instead of a single entity, the Slender Man, there is a Slender Man organization. Oh, so we have like the cult of, of cult of personalities, or like yeah, the cult we just had yeah, <laughs> and their and their yeah, and something about their their uniform is this ivory mask. I don't know. I will say that would kind of make a little bit more sense to have that as the, uh, with because 
uh, the Creepy Dark, they have a um, that part of that Slender Tales. They included one. I actually started listening. I listened to all of them after um, you mentioned it earlier uh, off recording that um, you thought they were all part of the same thing. Um, yeah, because the guy gives them a title, and I, d- yeah. I couldn't find the original work, so I thought it's like, okay, Slender Tales Part 1, The Slender Knight. I just figured that was how this was broken down. Yeah, but it, yeah, and then uh, I started listening to them, and like the one was titled like The Slender Man's Army, even though it really didn't have any real reason to be called that mm-hmm. as a story. But yeah, that would have made a little bit more sense for like maybe a sequel to The Slender Knight, was that it's, yeah, it's multiple people, like generational kind of thing. And that's the thing, that it's not any supernatural entity, it's just this, like, weird secret society. Yeah. Which, I don't know, those are cool, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Dark Harvest series, basically, well, they didn't do that per se, but they basically had a cult that worshipped the Slenderman mm-hmm. as a Egyptian god demon thing, and they all wore masks, like, pale, like, the, the Guy Fox Guy Fawkes masks, um... <laughs> And uh, basically, they were a cult in New Jersey that were hunting down the car- the, the vloggers. <laughs> nice. That um, also is um, that's a nice tribute to X there. Hmm? Oh, the Guy Fox mess things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, basically that that the whole premise of the their the, the the take they did with Slenderman was that there was a cult that worshipped him and like straight up just killed people for like sacrifices to him and stuff. Um, as which ended up being out. oddly prescient. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also kind of probably the problem with with Slenderman kind of becoming really big in media is that he kind of went down in flames <laughs> because of it too. Like, not a lot of people like to not a lot of people want to keep keep up with the Slenderman like mythos and like the uh, the whole like the the story writing for it and stuff of like that when somebody in the real world took it too far. Well, yeah, well, took it too far or just like, oops, we got caught. I'm just going to say it was Slenderman because yeah. that's a thing I can blame it on. Because, oh, like, oh, video games, the, 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 uh, blaming it on video games is a little passe. I'll just blame it on this next, this new thing. Yeah, just just blame something on, blame it on a new thing. Adults don't understand. Yeah. I did it because I did it because I wanted his Pokemon cards. <laughs> <laughs> I I told I, I did it because uh because Pikachu told me to, mommy. <laughs> God. Actually, you guys read that story. Yeah, In fact, we did I think I <laughs> yeah. I can't remember if I sent you that story or not. But I do remember that story existing now. Yeah. Well, I remember the one where, like, uh, I had heard on, like, the news when I was in high school, like, some kids jumped out of a building thinking the Pokemon were going to save them, but Yeah. Uh, that was another that's another thing Ridiculous entirely. Thing. We actually we actually we, talked about that on a different episode. We did that. Too. It was like the Pokemon Black and Lavender Town syndrome stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, at some point maybe we'll do another version of that because I sure. mean, there's always more Pokemon pastas. Just like there's more of other horrible video game pastas. There's more everything yeah. forever. <laughs> It'll just never go away. <laughs> um, yeah. Do we have anything else to say about this one? Because it's kind of um, not much. Unless you want me to just talk about uh the the hour i spent reading about hans holbein the younger <laughs> i mean maybe do like a like like anything i feel like just i feel like just link some images of the <laughs> yeah. i i i did a lot of i did a lot of there's there's that there's that woodblock manipulation that's actually a it's a photoshop manipulation of a hans holbein woodblock carving called the night it's part 31 in the dance of death which is 52 images and the photo manipulation is really subtle, which I think is why a lot of people believed it. But yeah. once you like, I'm I'm gonna get into the I'm a experienced shopper. I can see it from the pixels. But like once you actually like look at it and the original thing, it's like oh okay, this is actually a very this is actually a very obvious manipulation of this image. Yeah, I mean, and that, the, the interesting thing about that is like yeah, so like Stephen Shorter used dur- the the night um, like woodblock piece as the inspiration for the story, but like that's basically been around for as long as the like the, I think about as long as the Slenderman mythos has been around, like, since 2007 or so. Yeah, it was because um, it, it, I think that it was one of the things posted on Something Awful. Yeah. Because the whole idea was just put Slenderman in this. Yeah, and it was, <laughs> it, it, like, the person did it, like like you said, very subtly, so it worked to try and, like, take this old, like, to ingrain this creature that has, like, was brand new to the internet and to, like, society, and then ingrain it in something historical, which is kind of the premise of this story in general, too, so... Uh, and then, like the the so many different modifications that people have done to it since then, like people have re- re- redrawn that, repainted, redrawn that image, 
They've also redone other things from the Dance of Death because the 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 thing about the Dance of Death series is that there's a skeleton in every in every single carving. Yeah. And in a lot of them, it's very it's very easy to take the skeleton and turn it into Slender Man. I think there's the child. That was one that actually that one was totally redrawn to yeah. incorporate and the to to incorporate the Dare Ritter version of Slender Man. Yeah, yeah. The whole uh, yeah. I, I think I, going back to the Dark Harvest thing, I'm pretty sure they actually had a um, so like with Marble Hornets, they had there was the Marble Hornets main channel, and then there was the To the Arc channel, which was like cryptic videos of the like a proxy character. Yeah. Um, or like it was basically the one that like would send like weird puzzles for the audience to do like the ARG aspect, and I know in Dark Harvest because um, at the at the time of this recording I've been actually rewatching it with uh, Captain Selenum, one of our other guest hosts uh, on the show sure. for that episode, which will probably come out before this episode, but I'm saying it anyway. Um, the uh, uh, yeah that show Dark Harvest Zero Zero has. Um, a secondary series, which is by uh, K- von Kinderritter. So I can't, and they, they go into like the whole like German aspect as well, because the uh, the the cult also uses the German folklore of Slenderman as much as like this weird Egyptian god thing that they have of it. And I can't help but now wonder if that like that Kinderritter was inspired by the De Ritter as well. Probably. I mean, so yeah, von Kinderritter. I'm just going from Google. It's just the child might. Yeah. <laughs> Or the child's night. Yeah, which is just yeah the guy. Um, and actually, well, kind of, of works in with that, um, but that other woodblock with the child being taken away by this weird skeletal uh, slender knight. Yeah. And it's interesting, uh, and also like that, that's the thing. Like Dare Ritter, while it's created to look like the Slender Man, like it's it's different enough that could have just become its own character. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, like. Uh, like I also said earlier, um, off recording, but um, I, I remember rewatching a or watching a, a trailer for a, a new video game that's coming out called uh, Ad Infinitum, which I don't know 100% if it's inspired or anything like that. So it may not be, but it the the monster that's hunting these like the character in the trenches of this World War One horror. Um, it definitely looks. Game. It definitely looks Slenderman inspired, at least. Yeah, or at the very least, kind of almost looks like the. Uh, like they also have like uh, for the logo of the game itself, it has like this weird like skeletal like Ouroboros, um, mm. uh, around the uh, the the symbol of the title. Uh, Makes Adam sense. Fism. So I can't help but like kind of draw some connections between that and the woodblock carvings of the Dance with Death. Sure. So and then oh, as and then as I found out um, from you the. Uh, the one where the slender or the knight is basically has like four, three to four limbs and multiple arms, is actually the uh, the photo manipulation and not the actual skeleton one from. Uh, yeah, because in the original stuff. one, it's, it's just a skeleton. Yeah, <laughs> it's not this like weird like what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so I mean, again, people just take inspiration from everything, right? So new and old. Yeah, and then this is um. Honestly, like looking at it again, this is um, this creature is like half Slenderman, half Rake. Yeah, all action. <laughs> God. Well, and again, that's another thing because the the Rake has in several Slender blogs has been like people have connected this, the Rake to being uh, either from the same reality or same wor- place that the Slenderman comes from, or being a servitor of the Slenderman. So, but yeah, I yeah, feel like we're, we're kind of also just kind of slowly just mutating away from. What we were talking. We're about. just talking. I mean, that's been most of this. Like, we're we're trying to discuss a story you can read in six minutes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and we've we've been talking for forty five. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And there's really like, I mean, there's not really a lot to discuss in this story. Like, it's it's pretty plain out there, and like the parts that are unsaid are kind of up to interpretation. Like I said, my own interpretation of the events and. We just sort of agreed with that. Well, yeah, because yeah, for me the story is basically it's a uh, it's a factual it's a I can't believe I'm about to say this a fictional factual like <laughs> spread of like ideas for like a slender vlog or like it feels like an artifact that somebody would like do re- would research on like or like a document of some kind that somebody would... it's uh, a yeah it's a mockumentary yeah that's basically kind of what it feels like um, Mike do you have anything to say or. Uh, well, I was going to go more ritual pasta. Okay. I think, uh, well, just on the side of, because he's saying what to do if you're 
Cologne. In Cologne. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in Cologne, go check out this yeah. place. If you're in Cologne and you're not currently running from the Slender Man, here's some spots where you might want to visit to learn more about the Slender Man. <laughs> Man. Sponsored by the Cologne Board of Tourism. <laughs> it's like it's sponsored by Germany. yeah, by Cologne's uh, Department of Tourism. <laughs> Just, um, but yeah, Lions of Man. Those people are the, the, those people who are in Cologne right now who are reading that story or like listening to the uh, the uh, the Slender Night by Creepy Dark is just going to be really disappointed if that stuff's not there. It's like what the fuck, man. <laughs> yeah. Or then it finds out that you know it actually is all there and. Stephen was just kind of a prophet. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I do say the, the the part about like oh check out the market, check out this, check out that. It it lends a lot more credence to this feeling more natural as a here. Let me sit you down and talk about stuff. Yeah. And yeah, it's 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 as a story, it's um it goes beyond uh, most stories on this show in that it is very competent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I guess what we're kind of boiling down to right now is, um, like, yeah, so there's no written, there's no typed up version of the story online, but there is that, the Creepy Dark video. Um, do we recommend it? Yeah, it's alright. I mean, it's six minutes long. It, and as much as I hate to say that, it's like, it's, not, it's like, check it out because it's not going to waste, your, like, a whole lot of your time. In this time, in the time you've spent listening to this episode, you could have listened to that story eight times. Yeah, basically. And, like, if you're a fan of Slender Vlogs and stuff like that, and you want a little bit more Slender Man goodness, check this out, beca- and just try to get past the person's hay fever slash accented reading of a story. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, Colonia. It's Cologne. <laughs> yeah. Um... Mikey, do you have any <laughs> other part of that recommendation? Or uh, well, uh, it's an interesting listen. Uh, nothing really happens. Well, yeah, it's more of a it's factual just, thing because yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's more like a, tour, a ritual pasta or tour guide. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 more of a ritual pasta or tour guide of <laughs> of this Cronin House uh, or Cronin Haas uh, art gallery <laughs> and the. Hmm. Slenderman related stuff that's may or may not be there. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. All right, um, Mel, Matt, do you have anything else to say before we finish up the show? Then, mm, let's see. Oh, um, I don't know. I can plug some shit. Go for it. <laughs> All <laughs> right, yeah. I've got a lot of I've got a vast media empire that comprises <laughs> dozens of viewers, um, <laughs> literally fives of tens. <laughs> Including uh, some of the people from El Dente Rigor Mortis. <laughs> yes. Uh, I got a podcast, The, Dr- uh, the Drunk and the Ugly, drunkandugly.com. It's an AP podcast. Uh, it's got 600 episodes. It's got 600 episodes. Um, but they're all categorized, so go there and you can like see what stuff's there, and you can you can break it down based on what games or systems you like to hear, or what kind of stories. Uh, I recommend starting with the one-offs. Start with Fiasco; those are all fun. Um, and then I do a podcast with Travis called Ugly Talk, um, where we discuss writing concepts and kind of taking ideas from films, TV, movies, games, and applying them to. Uh, taking the ideas from there and thinking about how you can apply these ideas to your own writing for RPGs or for whatever else. Um, I also, uh, let's see, uh, that's uh, theyknowthings.com. And then um, uh, I have a, uh, you can find my Twitch stream at spacecow.rocks. Um, I stream there every Thursday or so. Right now I'm playing Dark Souls, doing a blind run of that. I also play a lot of Crypt of the Necrodancer and a little bit of retro game stuff. And uh, I'm a Twitch affiliate now, so you can show up and give me money you got for watching ads. Be the first of your friends to give me money. (laughs) Right now I've made a whole three cents. Nice. The pennies keep rolling in. Um, And yeah, uh... And I'm uh, Space Cow two four five five on Twitter. So hey, follow me there if you want to hear more of my ramblings and read my sixty thousand retweets. Yep. Um, oh, and also actually for people going to the Drunk and the Ugly actual place, um, I do know that they you guys have also done some like horror ones that have. Like, uh, yes, we have a horror or slender man. We, we have a even. 
Um, I've done, yes, I specifically, there's a very old Little Fears game um, that was Slender Man related called A Nightmare on Mount Pleasant. And um, that's the one where I've rewritten that. Um, I haven't actually run it, but I've rewritten it to not include the Slender Man because I realized the Slender Man was basically irrelevant to the story. It was just a figure and I had him because there's a whole thing about child abduction. Yeah. Um, and then I realized, like, oh, I don't even really need the... The Slender Man isn't even really an important element of this. I can just make it some other kind of monster, and it still works. But yeah, that's um, that's one of the that's one of the stories we've done there. Yep. All right. Uh, and also, there's an there's an episode about Slender likes on uh, Ugly Talk. Right, featuring me featuring as a the guessing. cultist. <laughs> All right. So um, you can go check that out. Oh what? So you can go check that out. Ah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, if you like what you heard from this episode, uh, or if you didn't, for some reason you're still listening to us, um, leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted. Uh, we're on Kiwi Six, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, uh, iTunes. So leave us a review and rating. You got a you got a Google Play Store entry? I don't. <laughs> we'll have to. Does Kiwi, does Kiwi Six that. support that? I don't Kiwi Six seems to like I've I've looked it up a couple of times like just like Googled Al Dente just to see like what if there's anything like where else we are, and for some reason we're on things that I don't I haven't subscribed us to like we're on Podbean we're on like a bunch of other podcasting streaming like things. Yeah, uh, our our podcast has been picked up by that too. There's like some podcast aggregator sites. I guess that's what it is. Yeah, I guess that must be what it is because yeah we're just on a bunch of ones that I've never even heard of, but. I guess it's yeah. Guess I know that, that um, <laughs> like because and I think some of that is to get around like certain countries like firewalls. Like I know we've got a lot of listings on like a Russian search engine. <laughs> nice. So that's a thing. But yeah, um, and uh, you can leave us an email at al at gmail dot com. That's a l d e n t e r i g m o r t i s at gmail dot com, uh, where you can leave us suggestions for other creepy pastas. Hey, if you have a Slenderman one that is okay or not <laughs> we'll probably rip apart rip it apart as we usually do on the show um or we might like it who knows um and um me and mikey is on uh, twitter at east ends for evil uh myself i'm at review cultist which is yep basically review cultist one is the the primary um uh, Twitter correspondent for al dente however mikey does usually post quotes from each episode uh, from each story we do or most stories we do <laughs> since you've been on the show. Um, and uh, you can check out the title cards for each episode at crazonstudios.tumblr.com or on the YouTube channel at Dante Rigamortis, where we have the video versions of each episode, which are basically just the title cards matched up to the audio. Um, and if you'd like to support us, go to Patreon, look up El Dante Rigamortis, and choose the backer tier you'd like to support us at. Uh, you can also go to his DeviantArt and give him some points. Yeah. Give me, some, give me more llama points. <laughs> I don't even understand those llamas. <laughs> you can exchange them for other things on DeviantArt. Yes. Uh, and I guess that yeah, that's the that's the episode. So until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I am Mikey. The E stands for evil. I'm Matt. And this has been Al Dante Rigamortis. Sleep well. Gute Nacht. Gute Nacht. Him, it's part of the fun. Slenderman, Slenderman, dressed in darkest suit and tie. Slenderman, Slenderman, you most certainly will die.
Certainly will die.